Chuck Bungo, ladies and gentlemen. Chuck Bungo. Did you hear that? Did you hear what Dime Store Satan back here just said to me? <laughs> My God, you look like a, you look like a rejected Disney character. <laughs> Shut up, the fat jokes. How's that low hanging fruit taste? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> How you guys doing? Good. Feeling pretty good. I was sitting back there getting more and more and more nervous as time went on. How can I follow the most epic band ever? Yeah. How can I follow it? I don't think I can, but. Just in the whole talent side. Give everyone a round of applause. Everyone should be doing that. You, Levi, you're great. You're absolutely awesome. The 15-year-old girl inside of me was just weeping and cutting. Her. <laughs> no, in all seriousness. How old are you? 17. Man, I wish I could play that good when I was 17. I can't play that good now. And I've been playing for 12 years and I went to college for it. I wasted money on it. <laughs> Don't do what I did. But college is fun. You should still go to college. If not for the social growing experience. You know, and I see, I see these kids 17 year, years old. So talented. And the, and the rest of you kind of just go, what happened? Like, you, I, everyone told me you will eventually reach that point in your life where you'll just break. And, you're, and like your childhood will be gone. And you'll start just feeling old and terrible and tired. You know, when you wake up in the morning, I think when it starts... Whose water is this? It's mine right now. <laughs> when you wake up in the morning and you stand up and you hear this, I think that's when it starts to happen. I thought that's a story. But me too, what a coincidence. I'll bet you I'm like two U's put together, so it's even harder hauling all this around in the morning. But it's, it's also, I don't understand how things just in general work anymore. Like, at, like things are just completely foreign to me. I missed something. I feel like I went from like age eight to 29. They're kind of the same thing. But, uh, like, for example, and I'm going to use aliases to protect the innocent here. I was hanging out with my friend Frank last night. Now, Frank has a brother, and his brother is named Mark, okay? There's Frank and Mark. Mark's brother came over. I'm friends with Frank. His brother was there. It's kind of a, kind of a shiftless layabout, Mark is. Well, his buddy came over. His buddy walks in the door, sits down, and he goes, Man, the girlfriend's mad at me. And I went... We all kind of pulled up our pants and leaned back and went, all right, man, what's going on? We'll help you through this, you know, guys kind of. And he goes, well, you know, so you know that girl I was hanging out with? She's the bartender at that one bar. Well, you know, I went and hung out with her and, you know, we did our business. And, uh, you know, and, and then I, I left during the night and went home. I was like, this is already terrible and awful. And I feel like I have to go take a shower and pray. <laughs> Where's this going? He goes, so the next day I go to Big Lots with my girlfriend and I see this girl walk out of Big Lots and give me this dirty look. And then I went, he has a girlfriend. And he was talking and telling this story like, we should feel sorry for him. Like he did nothing wrong and then his girlfriend got mad at him because he slept with this other girl and she didn't know. And they were doing I don't get it. Maybe that's why I'm single, because apparently hit by, my friend uh, Mark, my friend's brother, goes, yeah, man, it's always tough juggling two girls. And I'm like, well, yeah, it really is. <laughs> I don't have the upper body strength to do that. But he's talking like it's this normal thing, and I just don't get it. And I, and I, and I catch myself saying these damn kids all the time. And then people who are older than me go, you don't know what. And I go, I do know what. I do know what now. And ten years from now, I'll be looking back and going, God, I was an idiot. Oh my God, I was such an asshole. Just like I did when I looked back when I was 19, I'm like, oh my God, I was terrible. It's the idea with tattoos. I'd like to get a tattoo. But if I would have gotten a tattoo back when I was 19, it probably wouldn't, would have been like, you know, the Metallica logo right here across my chest. And that was before I got fat, so it would have said, mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and then I went like, you know what? 
I'm not going to get that tattoo. I'll hold off on it. <clears throat> Ten years later, I went, thank God I didn't get that tattoo. But you know what would be cool now? And then I go, Ten years from now, I'm going to think, wow, I'm glad I didn't get that tattoo. It was stupid. So don't get a tattoo. People go, well, this tattoo means something. What does it mean? My friend from college, she's, she was kind of a music nerd. Okay? She got, who in here knows like musical terms and stuff like that? Anybody? Okay. Do you know what a, a DC and CODA are? A DOS signal and a CODA? Okay. She got, <laughs> she got a, she got a DOS signal right here above her belly button. And then the coda right below her belly button. And I was like, okay, why? And she goes, well, because you start here and then, oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. She was like a sister to me. But it's like, that's the kind of thing that you go like, when you're 65, you're going to go to the doctor and go, Jesus Christ, you have cancer. Oh, wait, no, what is, is that a lame music joke? Oh, you've made poor decisions in your life. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> you know why it's the most wonderful time of the year? Because I get to yell and scream about the Snuggie. Yeah. Who in here owns a Snuggie? Raise your hand, be honest. You two? Get out right now. No refunds, go home. You've wasted your money. I saw the Snuggie when it was just a generic blue, red, black, whatever the actual hell it was. And I hated it. I thought it was the most repugnant thing I have ever seen in my life. And I look in the mirror every day. Okay? Then I was out, and I thought they went away for a while. It was a couple years, they were the biggest thing. Everybody had to have one. They were the biggest seller. Everybody had one. And then they went away. And all was good for a time in Mordor. <laughs> all was fine. And then this year I went shopping. And I found something that as a Pennsylvanian, and especially my heritage being from Pittsburgh, chilled me to the bone. I saw right next to each other, two of them, Dallas Cowboys Snuggie, wait for it, Philadelphia Eagles Snuggie. I got so angry and furious, I almost burnt the mall to the ground. And our mall, we would have lost like, what, five bucks? Well, what about the DMV, JC Pennies, and all that other stuff? Wait, those are there? <laughs> they have one of the coolest things that I saw at the liquor store. They legalized absinthe. Has anybody had absinthe? Oh, that's great. <laughs> if you're of legal age, try it sometime. It's wonderful. And if you don't know how to make absinthe properly or try absinthe properly, uh, go watch the movie From Hell. Johnny Depp does it all the time. Pretty sure that movie is just a documentary on Johnny Depp. Um, but it's a great movie nonetheless. You go see it. But Absinthe, they had this whole setup in a wooden pine box. And it had the spoon with it. It had like a lighter. It had like all this stuff with it. And I went, I have to have this. So I can feel a little bit cultured. And uh, I went to buy it. And it looked like it was marked 20 bucks. And I went, $20 for all this stuff? This is great. Went to ring it up. She goes, that'll be $199.99, sir. I went. <laughs> could, I, could I not? It's labeled that. I was, sir, we just didn't change the sign yet. You know, if this was Walmart. <laughs> I saw a sign one time when I was in college and it said, it said, unbeatable deal, zero dollars, zero, 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 zero. And I went, that is unbeatable. I thought, could I just steal that stuff? Would I have to bring it up and pay them nothing? Like go through the whole process and get a receipt for a zero? Dude, when would I have to pay that I paid nothing for nothing? I don't think that would have to happen, but uh, yeah, I, I just, the, the point of all this is when you get older and frustrated with the generation, you start to drink. <laughs> And you just don't understand, and the world is confusing and terrible and awful. It's like he was saying one last thing, uh, a booth, right? Last thing. That's an awesome name. Does anyone ever call you Seely from Bones? Seely Booth? Can I call you Seely? You can call me Fat Guy. You call, no, I'll tell you what, you can call me Biggins. How about that? Oh, you can be Biggins and Booth. It's like a new buddy cop thing. I love it. We're going to make millions. The, uh, Oh, yes, we certainly do. It's, it's perfect. Big, bald, biggins, and bald booth. That's a 
alliteration. So, but he was talking about technology and I thought it was funny because when I was a little kid, it was, you either got a Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, like when you got older and you could look at both, Super Nintendo or Genesis. It boiled down to, were you a Sonic guy? Well, it's Super Nintendo's over here. Mario or Sonic. That's what you were. That was your choice. And those things were built like tanks. You could rage and throw the controller and burn the console and like crush the games and do whatever. And they would still run. They still run to this day. Now I hear people talk about, well, I'm on my third PS4 because the hard drive went and I had to send it back and I had to do this. It had a disc read error and the memory thing had all the, oh my God. And I didn't know if I was going to get a PS4 or not or the Xbox One because all my friends are on this one. You really got to think about the social aspect of a video game. <laughs> the most social aspect of a video game for me when I was a kid was going down to flippers at the mall and playing Mortal Kombat. Mortal Monday, back at night. I was a little kid, so mom had a dollar to go play a nice Christian video game where you don't pull people's heads off. <laughs> of course, son, here you go. And I went down there and I played that game and this is what I am today. Thank you all very much.